In this video, we're gonna take a look at the vignette settings in Lightroom and Photoshop's Camera Raw, and specifically some of those little settings like highlight priority, color priority, uh, paint overlay, and the highlight slider. Some of those settings that nobody really talks about, we never really use, take a look at how we can use them in our photos and kind of the do's and the don'ts, most importantly, on where we would want to and wouldn't want to. Well, folks, my name is Matt Kleskowski. Welcome to the latest video. Let's go ahead and dive right in here. So I'm in Lightroom and uh, I'm gonna go over here to the effects panel. And this would be the same thing in Photoshop's Camera Raw, okay? So we're gonna go concentrate specifically on post-crop vignetting. Let me get through the, the four default settings really quick here and give you an idea where this is going. Um, amount, left, black, right, white. Um, we're gonna be talking about left for this tutorial. We're gonna be making things darker by adding a vignette. We're not gonna do that. If you ever seen like the, uh, you're seeing the old 80s glamor portraits, like soft, and add the white vignette. If that's the look you want, that's how to get it. It's not the look anybody wants. So we're gonna go to the, uh, to the left here to make things darker. Midpoint is how far it encroaches in toward the middle. Roundness is the shape of it, kind of a rounded rectangle or a circle. I usually go kind of in the middle of both. And then feather is the transition. How soft is that transition? So very hard transition. I usually use a very soft transition here, okay? For most of the tutorial, I'm gonna be kind of heavy handed on the settings because I wanna be able to show you what they're doing. So don't take this as my normal settings here. I usually use a very feathered and kind of hopefully subdued type of vign vignette, but you might see it a little bit heavy handed just so we can see the differences here. Okay, so let's bring this over to the left. Let's, uh, let's talk about highlight priority. That's the default one. I'm gonna to cut to the chase and tell you about 70, 80% of the time, this is the one that you're gonna keep it on. All right, we'll go over the other ones, but this is where you're gonna keep it. What it's doing is it's trying to, it's trying to maintain some specular highlights, the bright highlight parts of the photo. In doing so, it still will shift the colors and it'll shift the colors pretty significantly. So what highlight priority usually does is it will give you an, almost an exposure burning type of a look, right? Things will get darker, things will get a little bit more saturated. As you can see here, it's gonna shift the color of the flower on the edge, if you see before and then after. It is definitely shifting that color here. Let me pull back, let me feather a little bit too. So it's definitely shifting our colors in the photo here, all right? Uh, you can bring the midpoint in. So it's changing the yellows, but it's keeping some of those highlight, that's those, that specular highlight and some of those brighter parts of the photo, it's keeping that so we have a lot of depth and dimension to the photo, it's not flattening it out. Now color priority, which you might think would actually work good on this photo because what it'll do is it'll prioritize the colors. It'll make things darker, but it'll prioritize the colors so they don't shift. So we're gonna change it. And I think what you're gonna see is it actually almost has a negative effect on this photo because as it does that, it's actually trying to keep the edge of that yellow, everything else is getting darker and, and shifting a little bit. And um, the result is your flower actually starts to change colors as it goes through here. So it, although at first glance, you might think, hey, there's a lot of color. I wanna prioritize that. I wanna make sure they don't change. And in this case, this is not a, a photo I would use it on. I've got one of those next. But you can see here, it definitely is gonna start to, to change the color there on the edges. Color priority is trying to keep the overall the same colors. Um, they'll get a little bit darker, but they won't necessarily get more saturated, um, which is again, in the next photo is the look that we'll be going for. So let's switch over to this one. We've got some blue sky. This is where I tend to use color priority a lot. Highlight priority, as I pull this back, is going to make things darker, right? It's also gonna start to, let's work with our midpoint a little bit here and feather. It also starts to, to me, artificially darken the sky and, and make it almost too saturated back there. And to me, that's always kind of a telltale sign that we're, we're doing a vignette and we usually don't want that telltale sign here. So when I change this to color, let's go over here, see that? So I'm still able to add a vignette, I'm still able to darken the edges and bring your focus in, but it's not necessarily messing too much with the color of the sky and also the color, the greens and all the yellows and everything around the tree here. Um, a little bit on, on why I'm doing this. Why, why do I do the, the vignettes? And I get that question a lot actually. Um, 
Reason being is because you know, if you think of a portrait studio, a, a photographer that does a lot of lighting uh, with flashes and strobes, they're very, very directed about where they point their light. And a lot of times a natural vignette will happen because they will light their subject and control the light so it falls off. Right? So a good, a good outdoor portrait photographer uh, maybe takes a picture in the evening, they're gonna light their subject. You're not gonna see light all over the ground and things like that. They're, they're very good about controlling that. As a landscape, outdoor, nature, travel photographer, we can't control any of that stuff, right? I'm not gonna point a strobe at a mountain, it's not gonna do any good. So it's my job when I get here to do those things. It's my job to direct your attention because I can't use lighting to do it, okay? So as an example, you saw here, we, we, I think color priority, especially when I have a lot of blue in the sky, that's a time where I'll go and I'll use that. Now let's take a look. This one, this one gets weird and it takes a little bit of explanation because in some ways it does, it does counterintuitive to what you think it's gonna do. It'll make sense in a minute, trust me. Um, so we'll go over here to highlight priority. I'll start to pull that back and I actually like it. I think it's actually a, a pretty pleasing effect on the waterfall here, really focuses us in on, on the part of the photo that's important. Let's take a look at two areas. Let's take a look at some color, all right? So we go over here, we can kind of bounce back and forth. So what's it doing to the color area here? It is saturating it, I'm okay with it. You know, I, I kind of like the saturated look. The other thing it's doing, cause it's prioritizing highlights, it's kind of keeping the transition of shadow and highlight intact, all right? It's not really changing that, but, you have to see what it's doing over here because this goes against what you would think it's gonna do. Watch the waterfall. At zero, this is, this is overexposed to a bit. It's, it's pretty close to white. So that is, that's a highlight that is kind of pushed toward white. There's not much detail there. I'm on highlight priority. So you would think, well, highlight priority is gonna prioritize that and it's not gonna mess with it. Not the case, watch. So there's actually highlight recovery built into this. And it makes sense when you start to think about it because it's prioritizing your highlights. And what it doesn't want to do is it doesn't want to just make your highlights black. It doesn't just want to make your highlights gray or dark or black. It's prioritizing. So it's actually, it's actually recovering some of the detail in the highlights as it makes them darker. And if we compare that with color priority, Let's bring this down. So that actually does like the opposite of what we think it should do. It actually leaves my highlights alone. You would think it, it's, you know, you'd think, well, it's, it's going to make things darker, right? And it did. When you start to think about how it's working, color priority now says, hey, I don't care about highlights anymore. So I'm now just working on color. And as a result, it's a vignette. Remember a vignette, if you bring it to the left, it still has to darken the photo. There's no way around this. So it says, well, I don't really worry about highlights, but I need to darken everything. So I'm just gonna make it gray or blah or black. And that's really what it looks like. It's just got a, it's got a blah, gray, blah look to it. Um, so kind of interesting when you look at it. And then the other thing that it does is look at the transition. It really flattens things out. Remember highlight priority maintains your highlight and your shadow relationships and keeps the contrast. I think that looks good. Color priority to me really flattens it out. It, it keeps the color, the color doesn't shift too much, but to me it makes everything very flat and almost muddy in a way on that section there. All right, let's take a look at a example with no color in it. Um, also really quick guys, if you do me a humongous favor. Um, if no matter where you're watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I would hugely appreciate it if you would subscribe. I do a lot of these videos and uh, you'll get notifications when I do them. And if you're watching it on Facebook, uh, just go at it and just like my page. And that way, again, you'll get notifications when I do the videos so you don't have to go hunting around for them and you won't miss any. Okay. All right. So let's think about, you know, kind of th think ahead of me for a second. We have a photo here, not a lot of highlights, not a lot of color. So what's gonna happen? All right, well, let's go to highlight priority, bring it to the left, makes it darker, right? Switch it to color priority. It doesn't really change anything. Why? Because there's really nothing, there, there's no difference between the two. Um, there's not a lot of color there. There's not a lot of highlight uh, or specular parts of the photo there. So there's nothing to really prioritize and blend between each one of them. So you're gonna get pretty much the same result from that. 
And now the last one, this is pretty cool. This is, this is, this is what will let you, this is what you will let you sometimes get the best of both worlds. Um, when I have, when I'm, when I'm doing a vignette, if I have like a white background, I usually don't do one. If I've got a bright photo outside or a real overcast day, everything's very bright. I don't do a vignette because I don't want to artificially darken things. I don't want it to look like they just have black edges. So on a photo like this, I would go, I'd bring this over. Let's bring our midpoint in. Let's feather it out a little bit. I'd normally go here because it's a blue sky and I don't like the oversaturated blue look it's giving me. I'd probably go to color overlay and pull that back a little bit. And I think it'll give me a more, just kind of an overall more pleasing type of a look for the photo there. That's before and that's after. But now I've got this bright building down here. And this is really what drew me is, is the bright whites compared to the blue sky. Like I liked that contrast. And when I add this vignette, let's go a little heavier with it. When I add the vignette, it's actually starting to scoop out the bottom and take that, take that building away from me in there that's where the highlight slider comes in. So I can go over here and I can move my highlight slider and I'm basically saying, I'm saying, hey, protect the highlights. Don't apply the vignette to it. Now, it's a little hard to see. You can actually see a little happening here. Let's bring this, let's exaggerate it. Bring this down. Again, watch, I almost pointed at my screen like, hey, watch over here. Watch, watch the lower left corner. See that? So it's pulling the vignette away from that area. We still have a vignette on the photo. If you don't believe me, hit the checkbox in the toggle switch here. That's before, that's after. We are still very, very much vignetting the photo, but we're able to use that highlight slider to just pull it back a little bit, okay? Um, all right, and there's the, the one that I didn't cover is paint overlay. You can see it right down here in the, the little list there. Um, this is 100% of the time, don't ever use it. It is left over from Lightroom 2. It's essentially like, it's like taking a soft black paintbrush on a photo in Photoshop and then reducing the opacity of it. It's, it's really just what it is. It, it's, it's almost never, and I say never, but I really mean never, gonna look good on your photos compared to the other two methods. So just forget about that one, get it out of your vocabulary and move on to the other two, okay? Guys, thanks so much for watching. And I, I know this is, this is a very subjective thing. Um, people, everyone's going to see it a little bit differently. So some people are going to see things too dark, too bright, too this, too that. Don't get too caught up in the algorithms and all that stuff. Hopefully this gives you a good over, uh, overview of what they do. Kind of, you know, kind of almost take the mystery out of what they do. Uh, the most important part, sit back, look at your photo. What's the most pleasing when you start to add these settings? All right. Thanks so much for watching. And I will talk to you again really soon.